Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nico Wozniak. And I'm Peter Jobs. And we have an exciting announcement for you today. Now, we've been making cameras for years, but nobody's been buying them. Mm. I couldn't figure out why. And then it hit me. We have the perfect camera right here in our heads. So if we can make a camera that exceeds the specifications of the human eye, we'll be billionaires. <laughs> so I am pleased to announce today the eye camera. A camera with specifications that beat the human eyeball. Mm -hmm. Peter Jobs, please tell us more about what these specifications are. I thought you brought the specifications. Uh, that was your job. No, you I get the turtle next. You get the specifications, okay? Look, you're the one who makes all the engineers cry because you're working so hard, so why don't you get on the phone? Nobody with... cries more than I do, so don't come with me. Okay, okay. It's so enough. We're just gonna come back at the end of the video. Specifications. And let's get those engineers working on it right now. Is that an Android? So when Peter Jobs came to me and said, hey, I need you to make the perfect camera that can exceed the human eye. I don't even know where to begin. What kind of specs do I need to figure out? And I figured resolution was a good one to start with. Do you know what the resolution of the human eye is? That's a complicated question and with a complicated answer. But I have some cool experiments we can try. I think we should compare the resolution of our eyes to the best camera we have in the studio, which is the red. And we can come back and figure out what these numbers are gonna be. So here we have a red Gemini, which has a 5K sensor. So the real question I wanna answer with this experiment is just how our eye stacks up to the cinema camera. Now, there's two ways we can look at this. One is you have your field of vision, right? Right about here is where my hands disappear on the edges of my vision. It's basically 180 degrees. Can't really see individual fingers wiggling until I'm about here. 120, 140, something like that. So we can look at that entire field of vision, but in reality, our eyes actually have a certain central area of high resolution called the fovea. Imagine the full moon up in the sky. It's a little bit bigger than that. That's how big your high detailed center of your vision is. So first things first, we're gonna figure out what the equivalent of our field of view is on this camera. So 11 millimeters, that's actually pretty close. So I have our camera set to just give us the entire sensor here for our image. We're not cropped in at all. So we're hitting about 95 to 100 degrees for field of view right now. But in real life, what I can see with my eyes that look straight ahead is definitely a little bit wider, pretty close to 180. I'm gonna call it like 170, 165. Some people's eyes bulge Steve out Steve Buscemi? Heads. He's probably like a five <laughs> millimeter Steve dude. Buscemi's got like a 190 degree field of view. <laughs> <laughs> this is about as close as we can get to an accurate wide angle estimation of our field of view. So we'll start with this for our resolution test. Here's what I'm gonna propose. We draw two lines on a piece of paper and we go back and back and back until we can no longer visually tell that they're two separate lines and just click one line. We're gonna do the same thing on the camera with the same field of view and see at what point the camera can no longer distinguish between the two lines as well. Will you walk? And then I'm gonna tell you at what point I can no longer see two individual lines. How many lines are there? Two. I can still tell it's two lines. Hmm, right about there, stop. That looks like one solid line to me. You can see one for sure, one thick one I think. That's a fat one line. That's the point there at which our eyeballs are seeing these two lines right next to each other as one line. So now, let's we'll see what the camera can see. We are projecting a 15 degree field of view onto a 5K sensor. So our eyes can see basically 200 pixels per degree of field of vision. And our central fovea is roughly 15 degrees. So that is a 3K sensor. Let's see at what point this stops resolving the two lines. All right, we're passing the human threshold here. Yep, I can still see them. Easy. You still tell? Yep, easy. Easy, man. All right, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I think I can see it. So what we discovered here is that when you match the red camera to the central part of our fovea, the red camera actually beats the human eye. But when you match the red camera to our overall vision, our clarity beats the red camera. If you were to attribute the resolution that you see in your fovea to your entire field of view, your entire field of view would be 576 megapixels, which is nuts. That's not quite realistic, and it's not an accurate representation of our eyes resolution either. So a middle ground, a good middle ground that's to your eyes, when you kind of factor in your central fovea detail and all the rest of the detail around your eye, you're looking at basically creating an image mind it's about 130 megapixels pretty dang good right it's really dang good the next thing we had to figure out was frame rate peter do you have any idea what the frame rate is that we can see i don't know maybe 60 probably past 60 right because you can tell the difference from a 60 frames per second video to 120 frames per second video can you i guess we got to find out Anyways, we're going to be doing an experiment here. We have a TV here that's running Smash Brothers at 60 frames per second, and there's a mode you can turn on to up-res that temporal resolution to 120 frames per second. We're going to show people option A and option B, and we're not gonna tell them which is which. We're gonna ask them which one is the higher frame rate. That's 120. He's right. 
<laughs> I smelled the frames. <laughs> so it turns out only three out of five people can actually tell the difference between 60 hertz and 120 hertz. What do you take from that, Nico? You have to have a relatively trained eye to be able to pick up on that kind of high frame rates. But under half the test subjects couldn't tell the difference. So what it does tell me is that there is a diminishing returns that you start to approach as you get to 120 hertz and higher. So the question is, what kind of frame rates can the eye actually see? Well, your eye basically has an independent frame rate for each pixel in the eye. So there is an actual theoretical limit to your frame rate. Your neurons basically can fire at 13 milliseconds. That's the max amount of time you can have one neuron in your eye, like a cone, detect some light, and then shoot some light to your brain. How many frames does 13 milliseconds equate to? 75 frames per second. They're all slightly offset from each other. It's one chaotic mush, a blur of 75 frames per second that are happening all over the place. And here's a crazy thing. So they actually did an experiment with pilots where they flashed an image up on the screen. They were seeing how short the image could be and still have the pilots identify what kind of airplane was in the picture. And the fastest they were able to flash the image was 1 220th of a second. We at least have the vision of 220 frames per second. Once again, that's an oversimplification, but I think if we're going to make the eye camera stack up to the human eye, mm -hmm. we need to exceed 500 frames per second. Come here. Come here, sir. Peter? Uh, Just come on in, come on in. Shut the door, turn off the light. What are you doing, man? I, being completely honest, I feel like my unveiling of the product this morning was a bit stale. What better way to practice unveiling revolutionary technology than with today's sponsor, Raycon. I really got work to no, do. No, 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 no. <laughs> Just turn off the light. Are you ready? Hello, and welcome. My name is Ray Khan, and this is Raycon Khan 2020. We've been hearing a lot about the eyes this crew episode, but you know what we haven't been hearing about? The ears. I would like to unveil the Everyday E25 Raycon Earbuds. Raycon Earbuds are both stylish and discreet with no tangling wires or stems. These puppies sound just as amazing as any other audio brands you know. Steve didn't swear. Okay, sorry. So unprofessional, I'm sorry. These puppies sound just as amazing as other top audio brands you know. Plus, they come in a variety of interesting and unique colors to make your ears shine like a diamond. That's pretty good. These earbuds give you six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth integration, more bass, and a more compact design for a comfortable fit and noise isolation. They also come with a compact carrying case that charges them on the go. And if you're thinking about snagging some of these beautiful earbuds, now is the time because if you go to buyraycon.com slash corridor crew or click the link in the description, you can get 20% off with code corridor crew. Ah! If you want some of these, go to buyraycon.com slash corridor crew for 20% off your order. Thank you, it's been a pleasure and uh, good listening. Okay. Later. All right, so now we have the third thing we need to figure out, which is what is the light sensitivity of the human eye? What's the ISO? Wait, where's Peter? Wait, where is Peter? Hey, man, sorry, I had to return some videotapes. All right. What were we talking about? Anyways, cameras have a certain amount of light that they're optimally tuned for. Does our eye have a certain amount of light that we're optimally tuned for? In addition to that, cameras have different modes. They might have a regular light mode, they might have a low light mode, they might have a night vision mode. So I have an idea for an experiment we should do. I've learned that our default aperture of our eye, when it's pretty much all the way open, is a 3.2 f-stop. How'd you even figure that out, man? Just divide your aperture diameter by your focal length to get your f-stop. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a camera, we're going to set it to 24 frames per second, we're going to give it a 1 over 48 shutter, so 180 degree shutter. We're going to set the lens at 3.2 so it matches our eyes to f-stop. Then we're going to see at what ISO does the image from the camera and the amount of data it's getting match what we can see with our eyeballs. We're going to do this in regular light, in low light, and we're going to do this in night vision. About ISO 800, ISO 640 or so. ISO 640 about matches. We're going to do our low light experiment. We're going to come in here, turn off the lights, let the light from the sky light come in, and Daniel's going to join us with his A7 which has a much much higher ISO range than the red for us to kind of see what matches our eyesight. Then we're going to do our night vision test. We're going to go into a almost pitch black room and give our eyes at least five minutes to adjust. In real life, 30 minutes is what you need to get full night vision, but we're just gonna do about five minutes until we can kind of see, and we're gonna see where that's at. So we learned some pretty interesting things. 
Before you enter low light mode with your eyes, you can get up to about a thousand ISO in terms of sensitivity. Another crazy thing is before your it gets too bright and your eyes can't underexpose anymore, your aperture can't close any farther, and you know you're not blown out to white, you can go all the way down to one ISO. Your eyes have a daylight range from one ISO to a thousand ISO, which is pretty incredible. I don't know any camera that can go down to one ISO. I don't either. Now when it comes to low light, our native ISO is 16,000. It took a camera at 16,000 ISO to match the brightness that we see with our eyes in like a low light setting. Now night vision is pretty crazy. We discovered that we needed to go to 800,000 ISO to match our eyes in night vision. So our camera needs to have a 1 to 1,000 daylight ISO range, needs to have 16,000 low light and 800,000 night vision. 800,000 baby! <laughs> So we were tasked with figuring out the dynamic range of the human eyeball. What is dynamic range? There's a certain point where something so bright just clips out to white. That's the high end. And there's a certain part where stuff is just noisy and dark. The range between those two points is referred to as dynamic range. And I have an interesting experiment we can try to discover the dynamic range of our eyeball compared to our red camera. What we'll be doing is we'll be shining a very, very bright light on a wall. And we'll be getting it so bright that it's clipping in our eyes and we can't make it any brighter. Otherwise, we won't be able to see any detail. Once we've done that, we're going to hold up a phone screen in front of it. We're going to lower the brightness on that phone screen until it's just on the threshold of perceptible detail. Then we're going to use the RED camera, which has something called geoscopes that shows us all the stops the camera is sensing. We're going to see just how big of a difference in light values between that bright spot on the wall and the phone screen that we're dealing with. Well, we had some interesting results and the experiment actually worked pretty well. The answer is 21 stops, roughly. In fact, this is backed up with some research I did. So someone else was trying to figure out the dynamic range of the human eye, and the way they did it is they had somebody look up at the full moon, and there's actually a measurement for how bright the moon is when it's full. And then while keeping their eye on the full moon, they had them identify the dimmest star that was generally within that same kind of circle around the full moon. That star is also, of course, charted with its brightness. <laughs> and by measuring the brightness difference between those two points, they came up with a contrast ratio of a million to one that the eye could see from one to a million in terms of the contrast ratio, which happens to be 20 stops of dynamic range. Yeah, which hey. Correlates with our findings. It's theorized that your eye can see more than 20 stops, of course, but in terms of like an accurate scientific measurement, that was a pretty good way to do it. Kind of aligns with our findings. So we definitely need to make sure that the eye camera has at least, I'm gonna say 21 stops of dynamic range. Yeah, we could do that. So I went back into Peter Jobs' office and I presented to him the eye camera. What'd he say? He said, mm, it's okay. We need some bonus features because we gotta mark this thing. Like what? I was like, well, you know, real eyeballs see in 3D. We got stereoscopic vision. He's like, that's great. Pack two of them in the box. We'll, have, we'll sell it as a set 3D. So guess what? Real eyes actually have stabilization. Our eyes have tremors at 75 to 110 hertz. That means 75 to 110 times per second, your eye is constantly twitching and stabilizing. So we have optical stabilization in the eye camera. Not only that, you got a blind spot in your eye. That's right, there's a spot where your nerve is attached to the back of your eye, and it's just a blind spot, you can't see anything, but your brain is constantly doing content-aware fill for dead pixels. Uh, I guess we just screwed up and we didn't put a sensor there, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can actually test that out. If you look at one finger, you keep moving your hand closer to your face, eventually the tip of your other finger will disappear. Yep. Pretty cool. And then that's all well and good. I was like, wait, but what about the recording format? Media cards? Hard drives? And he's like, hmm, a picture is a personal experience. It's an emotional experience. So when you take a picture of the eye camera, only you get to see it. And then from that point forwards, the only way to share that photo is to describe it to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is beautiful that this product promotes social interaction. Oh yeah, and just like our memories in the picture degrades over time and sometimes things get added to it that weren't really there, it's all kind of wonky. And even if you record a video, you can only like get a brief snapshot of it if you play the video back. So there we have it. That's what our research has yielded for the eye camera. I think we're gonna sell like a lot of these. I'm honestly scared to bring He's up to Peter Jobs. He's gonna tear us a new one, maybe, or give us a little kiss on the cheek. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've done it. We are pleased to announce the eye camera with a resolution of 130 megapixels. That's an image of 20,000 pixels by six and a half thousand pixels. And a sort of full frame 35 millimeter sensor. With a frame rate of at least 500 frames per second, we are pleased to announce the eye camera boasts a dynamic range of 21 stops. <laughs> and it also has multiple ISO settings, such as 16,000 in low light, 1 to 1,000 in daylight, and 800,000 in night vision. Night vision might be a monochromatic blue, but don't worry about that, it's artsy. With other bonus features such as lens stabilization, content-aware fill, stereoscopic 3D vision, and custom skins that comes in blue, hazel, green, 
that's it. So there you have it, a revolutionary new camera that meets the specifications of the human eyeball. Available only nine months after the conception of your purchase at CorridorDigital.com. To place a pre-order, hit the subscribe button, ring that little notification bell, and leave a comment down below with what color you would like. What color are you going to go with, Nico? I'm going to go with a green. Hmm. Same. Anything else? Head on Well, I guess that's it. Nope. All right. Head on over to CorridorDigital.com. God damn it. Head on over to CorridorDigital.com to check out an exclusive vlog. Okay, see you later. Mother <laughs> <laughs>